And hey, failing to plan is planning to fail, right? Failing to believe in God is believing there is no God. Matt Dillahunty, Honey, On Ra, Jimmy Snow, and Jimmy Snow just let the Freudian slip. That that is so true. Look, if you don't believe in God, conversely, you believe there is no God. Do the math, bitch. <laughs> Quit playing semantics. It's math, not board games. Possible. Well, actually, I don't know if it's possible. I cannot eliminate the possibility that some God is out there somewhere. However, I don't believe there is, and I believe that there is not. Mentioned how uh, Baron Albrock just said that he is an atheist, and he kept explaining that that atheists are people who just they simply they're not buying the bullshit. That's that's all yeah. it is. Yeah, that that you know, you're you're telling me the story, and I'm saying, hell, maybe that might be, maybe that's true, and maybe it isn't. But I'm not going to believe. It. I'm not going to say that I know that it's false when I don't know. But I don't believe that it's true either. I don't believe that's an atheist. Yeah. Now, within the category of atheist, you can be an anti-theist, as I am, or you can be agnostic, as I used to be for a long time. But then somebody pointed out to me the same thing, that you know that there are not fairies living in your asshole. That you, you know, for the same same reasons, that you know that there is no God. And I've realized, you know, that's right. But what happened with the agnostic thing, and this confused everybody, was that Darwin's bulldog, Thomas Huxley, uh, was irritated by people in his day when they were finding evidence of evolution, which of course completely contradicted uh, the, the, the Christian doctrine, you know, if it, biblical literalism. So they were saying that it was proof against God and therefore they know there is no God. And Huxley thought that that was an irrational argument because, you know, technically it is. It does disprove, you know, the, 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 the biblical literalists, but there are other versions of God that are a little loftier than that and, and can't be, you know, chopped down quite so easily. So Huxley didn't understand what atheism meant because he's dealing with people who don't know what atheism means, and he didn't know what Gnostic meant either, but he creates this word agnostic, which consequently doesn't make a lot of sense, where he says he doesn't have the, the belief that God exists, which is atheism technically, and he doesn't have the belief that God does not exist either. And the interesting thing about that is, is everybody thought that, well, if agnostic means that you don't believe that God does not exist, that means that atheists believe that God does not exist. So he redefined atheism by creating a new word. Interesting. But the fact is, is it, it didn't mean that ever. I mean, if you go back to, to Webster's 1828 dictionary, which predates Huxley's invention of the word agnostic, that already, the definition says that atheism already was a lack of belief that there is a God. So yeah. it was never belief that there is no God. It was never that. It never meant that. But a handful of philosophers get a hold of this agnostic thing, and they, and they like to make things unnecessarily complicated. So if you, <laughs> if you have, if you have a belief or if you don't have a belief in X, well then that means you have a belief in, or in not X, you know, and then they try yeah. to, they try to just make things as, as, as intricate and complicated as it can possibly be until it gets absurd. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it, atheism, according to philosophers, and you get to any academic philosophy website, yes. just Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy or the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, both of them say that atheism is a belief that there is no God. <laughs> but every atheist in the world, other than philosophers, says, no, I, we just don't buy your bullshit. We just don't believe there is a God. That's it. Yeah. So in yeah. practical application, we have the entire universal atheist movement, and I'm a representative of American Atheists. I was a president of Atheist Alliance of America. I do things in association with many other atheist organizations, all of them, thousands of people identifying as not having a belief in God. They put their definition. Atheism means one thing. We don't believe you. We don't believe in a God. Not that we believe, not that we necessarily believe there is no God, just that we don't believe there is a God. Some, Some God... God is, is out, out there, there somewhere. somewhere. However, However, I don't, I don't believe, believe there is, and I believe, believe that, that there is not. not. God damn you. God damn you. Polycarp, who was a disciple of John the Beloved in the Bible, 
he was being martyred in his old age. And they told him to recant Jesus. He's like, 80 and some, I, I forgot, 80 and 7 years have I served Christ, and he never did me any wrong. How can I deny him? And he was burned, and they tried to burn him at the stake. He would not burn, so finally a soldier stabbed him. And his, and his blood, it is said, quenched the flames. Okay, eight and seven years have I served him, and he never did me any wrong. Look at Polycarp. He got to live to be an old man. He got to live the sweet life as a Christian. He didn't have to die young like so many Christians back then were doing, having to do. God gave him a long life. So of course he's not going to, of course, but look at me. God has done me plenty wrong. Yes, he saved me, but God cut down the tree I planted at my childhood home at 1410 Farmgate Road. His own child, Milton Fields, who owned the home, had the tree cut down. I called him, and he offered to pray with me. He cared. I so I th I I thank you, Milton Fields, for praying with me. That this meant a lot to me. But you know, he still cut down the tree. It's like I lost a loved one, and God could have spoken to Milton Fields' heart, spare the tree, but He didn't. I can't get big numbers on social media, so fuck you, God. I'm not a good-looking guy. If I'm not a good, if I'm not gonna be a good looking guy, God damn you, God! My mouth is full of curses at God. He gave Polycarp the sweet life, but not me. I'd be willing to mar be martyred, that <laughs> Polycarp. I don't want to be, I, I want to be a Tim Tebow type of Christian. I want to be an Alice Cooper type of Christian. He still gets to sing rock songs and be a rock star. I got money and he's a Christian. Tim Tebow got to date Taylor Swift. Can you imagine that? And he was say, a Christian when he got to date Taylor Swift. He, he, he fulfilled his dream of being a football player. And I can even get a song under the top 40. No, fuck you, God. I'm not ha accepting just making it from paycheck to paycheck. No, fuck that shit. Even if I do get disability in SSI, even if I am a professional bum, even if I am a leech of your taxpayers' dollars, I'm not happy with myself. I'm not a good looking guy. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a good goddamn. I've got, I don't give a good goddamn. So Aaron Ra, Aaron Ra, and Matt Dill Honey, don't you try to tell me, hey, Chris, stop being angry at God because there's no such thing as a God. Let me tell you something, God damn it. I'll be angry at the society. All I can do is curse God. But I can do things against society to make society pay. I can do that. I digress. But anyways, so Iron Ra, you want me to stop believing in God? <laughs> Sucker. She never do it. There's too much evidence. Too much possibilities. There's not enough conclusive evidence to disprove that a God exists. And that, that Look at the power that Christianity has. No other religion has a, the, quite the same power that the power of Jesus Christ and the name of Jesus Christ has in religion. None. Christianity is the only religion that has killed people for refusing to convert to Christianity. Christianity is the only religion where God has killed people for cursing the Holy Ghost, mocking the Holy Ghost, for refusing to convert when they felt that inner drawing 
trying to draw them to Jesus Christ. And they said, no, 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 no. Or when J. Harold Smith tried to convince somebody to give their life to Christ, and they said, no. Real vindictively. And so God killed them. This is Hinduism. That no other religion, not Hinduism, not Islam, not Mormonism, has the power to kill people who refuse to convert to its religion. That right there is reason enough for me to keep believing in Jesus. And Aaron Ra has come up with the theory that the, this reality is eternal. It's always been here and will always be here forever and ever from eternity to eternity. Now how can this be? If everything is happening this moment, if everything from eternity past to eternity present is already happening this moment, right now, it's possible for a reality to have always existed. But that being so, why? Why this? Why this reality? Reality. This is a rotten reality with too many loose ends. You expect me to believe that this reality is a measure of all things. When evil men get away with the evil they do and die happy deaths, and good men do good things, and they're killed, tortured, and die prematurely, and there's no justice, no freaking justice. You expect me to believe that this is the measure of all things? There has to be something behind uh, all this. And until you, and until you can disprove this, I will not stop believing in God. And the reason I believe in the Christian God and Jesus Christ is because Jesus Christ and the God, Jesus Christ has a power no other religion has. If I could stop myself from believing in Jesus, I, be I would believe that this universe, this reality, is the eternal now. Yes, there is a free will, but it's already happening right now. Every, every free will action is already happening, happening right now. It's a paradox, my friend. It's a paradox. Yes, uh, it's free will, but everything is determined with the variable of free will in the equation. And that's beautiful. If there is no Jesus, then this would be this would be the meaning and the purpose of reality. I would see this reality as an eternal struggle. Of life against death. With life overcoming death. Only become, become only to become over oh only to be overcome by death constantly. And life's everlasting struggle to make it the quote unquote the top godhood. Never ever always advance this is why there would be evolution. It's not on a biological basis. It's on a chemical basis. It's chemistry trying to reach the top. And consciousness is a force that drives it all. That, that would be what consciousness is. The very stuff of reality. But... There's one thing that stops me from believing this. There's a power that Jesus, the, name, the power that Jesus and his name and the message of Jesus has. Even, even if I were to abandon Jesus and believe in Jesus and stop believing in the great cosmos, whatever, as being eternal, the eternal struggle of life against death, with death and life forever and ever and ever and ever overcoming each other, only be uh, life being overcome by death, only become of only to be overcome by life again, only to be overcome by death forever and ever and ever, and ever from, from eternity to eternity.
Even if I would stop believing in Jesus and stop believing in this, there would be a gnawing inside me that would not leave me alone. That not unbelief in every other religion cannot produce. Even if I did not believe in Jesus Christ, if I heard the message of Islam, if I heard the message of Hinduism, of Voodoo, none of those religions would produce a gnawing in me. Now, the only way I could get rid of this gnawing was to convert to that religion. You will not find one person on this planet in the past, in the present, and the future who has that knowing, to, who has that inner knowing, that disquietedness, like before a storm, when they hear the message of Islam, Hinduism, or Voodoo, or any other religion except Christianity, to convert to that religion. You not find it. I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay you a million, I'll pay you a thousand dollars I got on my savings account if you can find such a person. If you can find a person who was killed by an act of God for refusing to convert to any other religion besides Christianity when they were preached to and died within three days of refusing to convert by an act of God. You not find it. Jesus has the power no other religion has. So let me tell you something. If I'm not going to be a good looking guy, if I'm not going to have the long forms I want, longer than all those top notch girls, at least the ones who are as tall as I am, or a little bit taller than I am, if I'm not going to look in my 20s, I curse with God. I curse them. I just don't give a fuck what happens to me. If I'm not happy, I don't give a good God fucking God fuck his goddamn God good goddamn. If God doesn't love me enough to give me what I truly want, then fuck this God. Having salvation is all I need, but I'm sorry, God. Like David, it's not enough. It's not enough. I gotta have my 50 minute thing. My time and son, I gotta have it. At the expense of all my heavenly rewards except salvation. I choose my, I vote my free will for this. I demand it and the consequences that come with it. I demand it with the consequences that will, that I'll have to reap what I sow. Just as long as, just, uh, just as, long as I cross that finish line. Saved. 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 He that endureth to the hands to the same shall be saved. If you truly love me, God, I, if you truly love me, Give me my damn free will. And give me my good looks. Give me my, give me my time and time. Give me my songs in the top ten. More importantly, give me my good looks. Give me my long form. Give me the ecstasy that comes with it. Give me the. Let me look in my like a college boy when I'm fifties, sixties. Let me see and be seen by an innumerable, innumerable company number. Of top nurse girls, past, present, and future, as long as I live. Let my message be heard by everybody. And if not, God, fuck you, kill me. Just let me be saved. I don't want to live. Fuck you. <laughs> and let me have this while I have the perfect health. Folks, is this too much to ask? Because if it is, fuck you too. I'd rather be the hammer than the nail. Yes, I fucking would. If I only fucking goddamn son of a bitch could. I should fucking would. God fucking damn it. God fuck is good goddamn fuck. I just want what makes me happy. I just want to be happy. And goddamn the stupid shit goddamn the rest and god give me the best and god let me be the best and god fuck the rest god fucking damn it god damn you Love me, but instead you stood up, up, you spit me out, you kick me down. I hate your never love me. They said to kill my toe, they ripped my heart from my chest, left me to rot in a grave. Should've known I'd never stay.
God damn you. I was conducting a revival, a associational wide revival sponsored by the 27 Baptist churches in that parish in Louisiana. You know, in Louisiana, they do not have counties like we have in North Carolina. They have parishes. And this was a parish-wide revival. And we had come to the last night of the meeting, and I was preaching this sermon, and the meeting was being held in the rodeo arena. And as I preached, on the last tier of seats, over to my right, on the last row, top seats, were three men that I'd never seen before. And they had laugh and make fun. Now, preacher, it has never bothered me when a little baby starts crying and the mother gets up and walks out. That don't bother me. But under God, I cannot preach if I see two young people laughing. I cannot preach if I see anybody mocking. It just somehow or another takes it away from me. Three times. I stopped. And I said the last time, if you men, don't want to hear me preach. A lot of these people have come from miles to be here tonight. And they do. Would you just get up and walk out of the arena? One of them said, if you think you're man enough to come up here and put us out, you just come up here. And I prayed a prayer. Never have prayed before. Never have prayed since. I said, dear Jesus, let me backslide for 15 minutes. And I promise you, Lord, if you'll let me backslide for 15 minutes, I'll go up there and beat the devil out of all three of them. And God said, I didn't call you to fight, I called you to preach. He said, you turn them over to me. And I did. And they continued to mock all the way through the sermon. We had over 400 people to walk down that aisle that night and give their hearts to Jesus Christ. I fully intended to never show them enough attention to address them again. But just as I was ready to pronounce a benediction, my arm came up. Preacher, did anything ever come out that you hadn't planned to say? That you couldn't help but say it? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you, brother? How many of you preachers here have ever had something just come out that you didn't have in your notes and it just, just came out? Yes, every preacher, every God called preacher has. And my arm just came out and I said, I don't know who you three gentlemen are. But all three of you stepped over God's deadline. God signed your death warrant. And God's going to kill all three of you. That was about 10, 15 Sunday night. At 8 o'clock the, the next morning, I didn't know who these men were. They were three businessmen. One of them put the key in the door of his office on Main Street, Ringo, Louisiana, and dropped dead. At 11.30, the second man started across the street to a little restaurant to have his lunch from his office. And a lady was driving up the street and almost ran over him. She said he just walking along normal, fed flat on his face, and died right there in the street. At 5.30 that afternoon, the third man was sitting in his office and he said to his secretary, My two friends are in hell, and before the sun goes down, I'll join them. And he pitched out at her feet a corpse. My wife was with me in a revival. We had closed the revival meeting on, on, on that Sunday night, and we had driven about a hundred miles to a little country church to begin a revival meeting on Monday night. And there were no motels within 25 miles of that little country, that little country church, and we were staying in the home of the of the pastor. We had preached on Monday night. We had come back to the parsonage. We had had some refreshments, and we had gone to the room that had been assigned to us for our bedroom when I heard the telephone ring. And I heard the preacher when he answered, he said, No, I'm not going to call him to this telephone. He is so weary and so tired, I'm not going to call him. Unless it's an emergency. And the party on the other end of the line said, It's an emergency. And when I got there, it was a pastor of the First Methodist Church. And he told me what I've told you. And he said, Brother Harold, our whole parish is in uproar. So we had a meeting with tonight with, with a number of the preachers and we tried to rent the rodeo arena for next Sunday night but we can't have it but my auditorium is the largest and would you come back next Sunday night and preach. I turned around to the pastor and he gave me the, uh, the consent to close the meeting on Sunday morning. My wife and I drove back that hundred miles. We left in order that we might get there about 30 minutes before the service to begin that night. 
when we drove up, there were over 1,500 people in that yard. They couldn't get in that building. And they said, the people have been here for over an hour and a half, preacher. Not a person, not another person could get in that auditorium. I got down and started walking down, sliding down the aisle, sidewise, my wife and I. And the man that was in charge said, preacher, don't sit down. Just come on and preach. And before I could open my Bible and read one scripture, 17 men jumped up out of that audience and ran down that aisle just as fast as they could get down there, saying, we want to get saved. Religious fundamentalists asked me that question. If we could prove that there was a God, would you worship him? I say, I no. say no. Yeah, that's why I say yeah. fuck no. I, I, I can I know that there's no. a God. I can know that there's this, this unjust, tyrannical uh, despot who's going to punish me uh, for, for, for thinking, well, just for thinking. The, yeah. the despot is going to punish me for any thoughts that I have, any any kind of questions, any kind of ambitions, whatever it is, You know, because the, all the believers want to do is... Uh, get all slave lovey about something. any being worthy of worship would not want to be worshipped God damn you God damn you God damn you God damn you and hey, you goddamn father fucker, motherfucker, goddamn fuckface. If you're on a goddamn court of goddamn law, and the lawyer asked you, do you believe Matt Dillahunty murdered Arn Raw? Jimmy Snow answers, I don't believe he did. Then the lawyer redirects and says, so you, basically you believe Matt Dillahunty did not murder Arn Raw. And you're going to be forced to answer, no, I believe Arn, uh, Matt Little Honey did not murder Arn Ra. And back in the 80s when the Supreme Court ruled secular hum humanism was a religion, because it's a belief system, god damn it, you believe there is no God. So atheism is a form of religion, an anti-religion, <laughs> ah! but still a religion, a belief system. You believe there is no God. You don't believe there is a God. You don't believe there is a consent. You do not believe there is a Santa Claus. Or well, do the math, cunt. You believe there is no Santa Claus, cunt. Do the math. Math is a universal language. Not wordplay, not semantics. You stupid motherfuckers. You stupid fucker. Come on, goddamn motherfucker. If you were in a court of law and the judge at you, do you believe there is no God? What are you going to say? If you answer no, the judge is going to say, so you believe there is a God. Come on, you stupid motherfucker. Do the God fucking math, you stupid bitch. God fuck it. God damn you.